Welcome to Encounter the Word. We at the Jesuit Institute offer this reflection every Sunday on the Liturgy of the Word, where we try to make sure that our reflection on God's Word helps us live God's Word in our daily lives. And so, let's pray together. Lord God, we give you thanks that we can gather as a community to reflect upon your word and how your word invites us to respond at this moment in our lives and the life of our community and our society. Help us through our listening to deepen our ability to hear what you want of us so that we might live this word in practical ways in the days that are to come. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child, and she cried out in her pangs of birth, in anguish for delivery. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems upon his heads. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to bear a child, that he might devour her child when she brought it forth. She brought forth a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ has come. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. On your right stands the queen in gold of Ophir. On, On your right stands, stands the queen in gold, gold of Ophir. The daughters of kings are those whom you favor. On your right stands the queen in gold of Ophir. On, On your, your right stands, stands the queen in gold of Ophir. Listen, O daughter. Pay heed and give ear. Forget your own people and your father's house. On, On your right stands the queen in gold of Ophir. So will the king desire your beauty. He is your lord. Pay homage to him. On, On your right stands the queen in gold of Ophir. They are escorted amid gladness and joy. They pass within the palace of the king. On your right, right hand is the queen in gold of Ophir. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by man came death, for by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ, then comes the end. When he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Mary has been taken up into heaven. The host of angels rejoices. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a city of Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and she expla- exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the voice of your greeting came to my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his posterity forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The reading from the Gospel on this day includes the stirring canticle of Mary, the Magnificat, which we pray every day at Vespers. This is the prayer she sang while visiting her relative Elizabeth, the future mother of John the Baptist. I am always struck anew by the revolutionary character of the canticle. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. Mary, a simple young woman from a marginal village, neither rich nor learned, who is carrying Jesus, Israel's Messiah, in her womb, sees things that I too often have difficulty seeing. When I read the morning newspaper, I have the feeling that the powerful are ever more powerful, that the rich are ever richer, that the lowly are ever more humiliated and that the hungry are ever more desirous of a morsel of bread. I tend to think to myself that brute force and only brute force determines facts in our world. I tend to sum up the situation in the words of the sage in Ecclesiastes, there is nothing new under the sun. Not only that there is nothing new, but there also cannot possibly be anything new under the sun. The world will always remain the same. Mary succeeds in seeing reality beyond the facts in the here and now. Of course, we need to stress that she is not the first to do this, but rather she is echoing the vision of the prophets of the Old Testament. One of the essential elements of the prophetic imagination 
is the ability to see newness, surprise, what changes the world. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth, writes Isaiah the prophet. Only God can create something new. Not only can God do something new, but God will do something new because God is faithful always to those God loves. In this, Mary is a prophet. It is not coincidental that she bears the name Mary, Miriam, the name of the sister of Moses, the prophetess. It is not coincidental that her canticle echoes the canticle of Moses. God has indeed cast Pharaoh's horse and rider into the sea. God will be victorious over the forces of evil in the world. This is the faith of the prophets, and this is the faith of Mary too. It should be underlined that this faith is not just up in the clouds. God has already acted in the past, and remembering God's actions strengthens the faith that God will act likewise in the future. When God brought God's people out of Egypt, God was victorious over the powerful and the rich and lifted up the lowly and the hungry. In her song, Mary, like the prophets of Israel, links the past in which God is revealed in God's actions with the future in which God's promises will be fulfilled. And what about the celebration of her assumption? After falling asleep at the end of her earthly life, the church believes Mary was assumed bodily into heaven. She would not know corruption. The one who had carried the Messiah in her womb some have asked, why did the Pope only proclaim Mary's assumption into heaven as a fundamental of faith in 1950, even if many believed this from earliest times? Perhaps part of the explanation is the context. Five years after the powerful and forceful had burnt the bodies of their victims in the ovens of the death camps, the Catholic Church sought to remind the world that Mary, daughter of the Jewish people, was assumed into heaven, not just in spirit, but in body. The church was proclaiming that the body is a temple of the spirit and thus constitutes a sacred place for the meeting between God and the human person. In this, the church fulfilled a prophetic role, following Mary and opposing a society that can destroy the body and the life therein. On this feast day, let us pray that the community of faithful might always fulfill its prophetic role, as did Mary and the prophets who preceded her. Let's join in praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, friends. Lord, we give you thanks that we could encounter your word, that we could reflect upon your word. And help us now to deepen our reflections as we try to live out the invitation that you have for each one of us. And in so doing, become 
your faithful disciples. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to have you reflecting with us again next week.